Hi there, I'm Beth, and today I'll be taking this AliExpress Midi Blythe sized doll and transforming her. She has lovely long golden blonde hair and the typical grey eyes which move side to side with this dial in the back of her head. These fake midi bodies have fantastic posability too. I had kind of a picture in my head of how I want her to look, but I couldn't quite nail it down exactly when I was sketching her concept, so I'm kind of going to wing it with this one. I started by taking her apart and very gently prising open the head with a flat screwdriver. I'll be changing out the default eyes and we'll paint the eyelids, but I like her eyelashes, so we'll keep them as is. She'll also definitely be getting a haircut. I started by popping out the grey eye chips and replaced them with some I had made, printed and covered with UV resin myself. I love these eyes. They're a bluey green with a little yellow and orange in there too. They came out so pretty. Make sure you wear a mask when you're sanding. Here I've got my 3M sponge sandpaper, approximately 500 grit, and I'm going to prep the front and back head plates by sanding them. I then got completely distracted thinking about her outfit and decided to go make her a cape. I had to draft a pattern, so I used a mannequin body to try out some options. I used some non-fraying fabric to test out my pattern, and I used scraps of masking tape to join the seams. I made a couple mock-ups in coloured felt, but realised I wanted to include some embroidered designs too. I have a new embroidery machine, which I'm dying to tell you more about soon, but for now I'll show you the design I created using Inkscape. I put this design into the machine, a Faf Creative Ambition 640, and then stitch it out. I could then cut and piece together my little cape. I gave it some dark green cotton lining and turned it right side out. It really suits my Dainty Meadow stock midi blithe. I finished the top with some faux fur trim and a snap fastening. Next, I set about trying to make a layered Mori style skirt for her. The underskirt is 16 by 9 centimetres, the next layer is 11 by 8 centimetres, and the smaller one is 8 by 6 centimetres. I will add lace and hem the three lower sides of each piece before gathering at the waist. I put together some tiny keys and a pine cone charm to sew on later. Here I've got my free midi top pattern, so you can make this yourself, and I'm adding extra length to the outer sleeve fabric. The lining is cut the same as the template. I sew round the neckline and join the sleeves at the cuffs. I trim the excess and snip the neckline seam before turning the sleeves partially through. The 
top kind of gets folded in half, right sides in, and then the sides and arms are sewn closed. I trim the excess seam allowance and use hemostat to pull the sleeves right side out. I make sure the join at the cuffs looks neat and is opened properly. Press out the corners and edges, and this is how I make slouched sleeves. The shorter lining holds the wrinkles at a specific length, and you can manipulate the wrinkles to sit where you like them. I'm going to combine this top with the Mori skirt. But first, I want to sew on some tiny gathered lace to look like straps. I will hand stitch the lining on the inside and add my finishing touches to the dress. I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I will definitely experiment with a fuller skirt in future, but I like these different layers and the fabrics look so natural and wholesome. Next, I'm going to use this pure wool yarn that I have and will crochet a simple pixie style hat for her. I simply determine the width I need and crochet until the hat can wrap right over her head. It's a rectangle that gets folded in half and closed at one end. I love this wool. There are so many different coloured fibres in here. Reds, browns, yellows and greens. Once I'm happy with the size, I hand wash and condition it and pin it out to dry flat. Here's my finished hat. I gathered the lower edge a little and folded the edge round the face back over itself. The hat closes behind the head with a button and ribbon loop. Next, I'll make her some shoes. I got this leather skiving tool for Christmas and although I'm holding it awkwardly here to try to show the camera, it works really well to thin down leather. This is great for miniature projects. I have made my own pattern and I copy this onto the leather. All my leather is recycled from sofa sample books, which were going to be thrown away. I love using this jeweler's hole punch for leather. It has just the right action and saves me hammering holes with a punch. I join my pattern pieces with a saddle stitch using two needles attached to the thread.
I join the upper to the inner sole and push in my shoe lasts to help set the shape. The boots get two more sole layers, sanding, finishing cream, buffing edges and some shoelaces, and then they're done. Off camera, I worked out how to make a tiny basket using the same wool as the hat, and also embossed my logo onto a matching keyring. Now her outfit has really come together. What do you think of it so far? Also, please let me know, for these full doll customizations, are you more interested in the process of the outfit or the sculpting? This doll took nearly three weeks to make and I wonder if I should split future projects into two parts or to make the outfit off camera? Leave your opinions in the comments please. Well, it's time to sculpt. I start with opening out her eyes a little. I've penciled some guidelines here. I want to see more of her eyelid and give her a more unique face. Here you can see quite a difference. Next, I mark the lip outline and will use my hand carving tools to gently scrape away the plastic above and below my outline. I try to leave the line untouched so when it's cleaned away, the new lip line should be visible. I also carve away plastic from her nose, making it a little less pointed and have the underside tilted more upwards. Once I'm happy with the rough nose shape, I mark nostrils and use a drill bit by hand to gently mark them in. I use a small bit at first, then a larger one to soften the transition. Finally, I'll shape the top of her nose some more. Here she is, all finished being carved. I'll spray her with MSC and then also some blush colour to get her face up started. I'll be using pan pastels for her face up and you can see here the light blushing from my airbrush on the front and back. I use makeup brushes for most of the blushing. They're nice and soft. I've added some colour to her ears and lips. I build up colour in layers, sealing them with MSC as I progress. Here I'm blocking in eyebrows with a brush before using a soft kneaded putty eraser to clean up the outlines and even them out a bit. I add some more cheek blush before sealing this layer. Once happy with the pastel layers, I switch to watercolour pencils for fine detail. I use a variety of colours to draw in her eyebrow hairs and freckles too. I also use the pencils to add her backplate art and pens to add her name and number. I'm naming her Juniper and drawing a sprig of berries for her. She's my 12th custom doll. 
I paint and gloss varnish her eyelids and lips. It's snowing again here, not very surprising in spring for Scotland. Here's her face with her hair. Goodness, she could be Rapunzel with all of this. Well, maybe another time. This girl is getting a haircut. I really wanted her to have a more realistic length of hair, but still to have curls, so I carefully style her hair again. Aww, it still looks a little wild, but I think it's really cute. What a sweet girl. I really like how she's coming together. I like to include a second outfit so my girls can get changed, and I thought Juniper could use a lighter springtime dress. I drafted this pattern myself, but the bodice shape is inspired by Stitch by Stitch with Lily's Apple Tea Dress. Check her out for sure, I love her videos. The sleeves are polka dot tulle, so pretty, but a little tricky to get over these midi hands, so here's a tip. Pop some socks onto her hands before sliding on the sleeves. These open finger hands can be a pest to get clothes over, but get the sleeves past them and then take off the socks and you're good. I'm really pleased with this pretty dress. I'll definitely get a tutorial put together for it at some point. <laughs> Her socks and boots can go on, and here's another outfit to enjoy. She can have her cape if it gets chilly, and her basket for when she goes foraging in the forest. I think this outfit might be my favourite, actually. Since he made me a petite stand last time, I asked my husband Craig to create and 3D print me a midi-sized stand. It has my scissors logo on the base and will come included. Well, that's nearly everything for her. She will be available for sale on my website when this video goes live, so she will need her special sleeping bag to travel in, in her sturdy box of goodies. I'll also be including a midi-sized clothes display stand. Her second outfit is displayed on it here. The base simply pushes on like this, and it can stand on display. We do have more of these on sale in my shop. I'll have her photos and details of everything included in her sale listed there, and you'll find the link in the video description below. I really hope you enjoyed seeing little Juniper's creation. She's a sweet girl who loves to go out in the forest and forage for moss, berries and mushrooms. She's a friend to all the wildlife there and is dressed well for any season. I hope she will find a wonderful new home soon. Before we go, I want to welcome my new patrons. 
They've all joined me over on Patreon and are helping support the channel. So a big thank you to Janice Harding, Cindy Dejus, Ellen Cutter, Andrea Burgoyne, Colleen Elliott, Bronwyn George, Molly Schlemmer, Rhonda Bentley, and Jenny Ashton. You're all amazing. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know what you thought of Juniper in the comments, and let me know your opinion for future custom videos. Should they be in two parts? Should I just show the highlights of the outfit making? I can always make a standalone tutorial for anything that's specially requested. I'm open to ideas and looking forward to chatting in the comments. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you again next time. Bye!